Hello and welcome to today's demo jam from the App Exchange. My name is Jeff Gross. I'm a Salesforce MVP, and I'm joined by two of my favorite people in the whole wide world. It's Joshua Hoskins and Amanda Nelson. Good morning, good afternoon, both of you, wherever you happen to be. How are you doing today? Good. I'm on the East Coast today, so I think Whoa. I'm probably on the same time zone as you for for once. Uh, and Amanda, for that for that matter. So hi everyone. I'm not in India today, but uh, this is uh, there's light outside, which is great. It's a, it's, a, it's a new demo jam for me. How are you doing, Amanda? I am great. Also on the East Coast, so good to see you here, Joshua. And I'm excited for this demo jam. It's going to be a lot of fun today. It sure is. And today we're going to be talking productivity apps. We want you, the audience, to follow along live with us on Twitter and use the hashtag demo jam. Today's participants include Verb Live, Seismic, Adobe, Prolific, Smartsheet, and Salesforce Labs. But before we can kick off the demo jam, we got to talk to Joshua to find out the rules. That's right. Well, a game show wouldn't be fun without any rules. And so there are, in fact, three rules. The first rule is you get three minutes. Each demo Jam contestant will get three minutes and only three minutes. If not, we'll yank them off stage. They're not allowed to use any slides and there'll be one winner for today's productivity demo jam and they'll get bragging rights for the demo jam. So what what, what, what else can you ask for? Um, three rules, that's it, not complicated. Stay tuned and vote. Jeff, over to you. Not complicated, but much fun. And just for the audience to recognize what these sounds are, when you hear this, that means the presenter has 30 seconds left and their three minutes is nearly done. But when that three minutes is up, you'll hear. So play along with us today. And to kick things off, I'm just going to go ahead and start it out with Adobe. Adobe Sign is a global leader in secure digital documents. They power and employee and customer experiences for more than just 75% of the Fortune 100 companies, Adobe Sign delivers 100% paperless processes to keep businesses moving, even for remote workforces and global offices. Additionally, Adobe Sign is delivered on the new integration with the fastest growth product for Salesforce out there, work.com. And it works across every Salesforce cloud, such as Sales Cloud, Experience Cloud, CPQ, Health Cloud, and Financial Services as well. The result is an exceptional customer experience, improved business efficiencies, and unparalleled productivity. And to show us the king of productivity today, it is Jonathan Schreiber. Jonathan, are you ready to show us how your three-minute demo goes? I am always ready to show you how my three-minute demo goes. Well, amazing. We're looking forward to it. Your three minutes begins now. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I know that we only have a brief time together. So if there's one message you take away from this whole demo, it's that uh, Adobe brings the tools you need, in this case, best of breed electronic signatures, right to where your business is getting done. And in this case, of course, we're talking about Salesforce. Now, as mentioned, we work across all the various clouds. But today, for a simple example, we're going to look at sales and we're going to look at sending from an opportunity. So this is something that happens in Salesforce all the time. I want to draw your attention to three things on the opportunities page. First of all, that we're in the value proposition step. That's going to update along the way. Um, and we have a lot of information on this customer. We have the products they're interested in. We have their name and address and all the communications we've had with them. But we don't have everything. We don't have their order number. So I want that to stick in your mind also because that's something we're going to be collecting along the way. Being built right on force.com, being built right within the Lightning UI means that we get this send agreement for signature right within the page. And you can send it right the first time and every time right with our integration to Salesforce. So here I could send a new agreement or grab the client services agreement. And uh, you can see all of this data is pre-populated. So it knows to go to the customer first and Sarah's email address to go to the executive second and that person's email address. It has the details and the email going out. We have the Word document. You don't have to start in PDF. We'll handle that for you. And this actually is a document that's saved right within Salesforce. So without further ado, I'm going to click Send because I only get three minutes here, but I could talk about this for a while. So I click Send. We get confirmation. We can track and manage that the agreement's been sent right from this page or right from within the Opportunity page. But 
I've got Sarah's email open over here. Uh, she gets an email from our sender, clicks to sign, clicks to review and sign. Sarah, the signer, doesn't need any account. It's really seamless. She can enter her purchase order number, click to sign. We have that already set up because this is a quick demo. She can either go to a, the Adobe sign page afterwards or you can customize that. So she can be taken on the journey you need and given the experience you'd like her to have. Back in Salesforce, let me just quickly refresh here. You can see it moves over to closed in one and the purchase order number she entered in 543 to one is merged back in. All of this was seamless built right on force.com and available to you across any of the various Salesforce clouds. Uh, there's no coding required for you to implement and for your senders or your signers, it's just a few clicks and it's very natural built right into Salesforce. I think I came in with about 10 seconds to spare. You did so. actually, and that is a <laughs> good thing. You know what? It's <laughs> you, We don't even often think about this, but Adobe, you're the originators of the PDF. And if you think about how impactful that's been on everything in business and in our lives, not only do you now have an integration that allows you to generate these documents directly from Salesforce, goes as a, completely a part of your business process, goes out, gets signed, moves it along, and even being able to see it progress through here, the right approval processes are happening, you're getting the signatures, you're making business move faster. And I'm I'm impressed. It's it's good that we can have that directly integrated because back in the days of having to generate these things manually, know who to route it to, being able to produce it, send it out. I mean I hope there aren't people who are still out there passing around physical documents anymore, but you make business be able to to sing very quickly and and definitely yeah. adapting to the new world. Absolutely. It's the, it's the sexiest product you can have. It's documents and signatures. Um, <laughs> but really, we streamline it so that it's not something you have to think about. I was going to say that may be something that comes up at, you know, internal. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's the sexiest thing out there, but absolutely <laughs> it's necessary for business. So I'll give you that. Amanda, yeah. what do we have for Jonathan as a question today? I mean, we all love data, right? So I think it works, but great go. job on that demo. The question from the audience. Um, so in the demo, we saw this fully prepared form being routed through a present workflow. How much of the initial setup requires tools outside of Salesforce, such as Acrobat or even Adobe Sign? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great question we get asked all the time, specifically, you know, do I need Acrobat to use Adobe Sign or anything like that? Um, everything you saw today was built and produced right within Salesforce. Even the document itself that was signed and prepared and that data merged, that was just a Word document stored in Salesforce. You don't need any outside tools. And for the Salesforce administrators who might be thinking, oh, but I have to create the template document somewhere, you do it right within Salesforce and set up that routing. It actually happens, again, right within Salesforce. So um, we have all of these pieces built in. You can click agreement template. And all of this looks and feels just like any other page and setup would right within Salesforce for setting up your recipients, data mapping, attachments. Uh, it's all right here. So everything happens right on force.com. All right. Well, excellent job, Jonathan. Well done. Thank you. Thank I am going to hand it over to Joshua for our next contestant today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. Great job. So next up, we have Prolific. Prolific brings relationship back into CRM with the leading key account, opportunity, and content management suite for Salesforce first companies. This includes relationship maps, influence charts, cross-sell maps, digital content playlists to crush competitors and ace the customer experience. Today with us, we have Jack, who's gonna show us how to do just all that, acing the customer experience in three minutes or less. Are you out there, Jack? I am ready to go. All right, your three minutes starts now. Good luck. Prolific's journey began with a question. Why do almost half of all CRM projects fail? Turns out we weren't the only ones, Salesforce included, that were asking that question. Harvard Business Review states the primary reason CRM fails is too often the systems are used for inspection rather than creating improvement in the sales process itself. In surveying the Salesforce customer, we found two core motions within the sales process that we're pulling reps out of the platform, thwarting adoption, collaboration, and overall CRM effectiveness. Those two core motions were key account management and content management. 
Prolific's 100% native apps focus on improving the sales process by bringing those motions back into CRM. Being native, our apps download in minutes, eliminating SOWs while complementing the investment that companies have made in Salesforce rather than competing with it. Prolific Crush turns account plans from a quarterly event into a living and breathing plan within Salesforce that drives teams to collaborate to understand key stakeholders, uncover cross-sell opportunities, and develop a team-based strategy around the account. The key stakeholder section brings Salesforce contacts to life by enabling teams to build visual and dynamic org charts that indicate influence and support levels. A bi-directional sync with the Salesforce contact drives data quality and ensures reps are never a click away from making necessary updates. Cross-sell provides teams with a real-time visual understanding of what they've sold, where competitors reside, and most importantly, where the upside is. This section becomes especially impactful in team meetings where teams can collaborate around how to progress opportunities or penetrate into new departments or locations. Much like the stakeholder section, teams are never a click away from making an edit to an opportunity or creating a new opportunity. And once we understand who the stakeholders are and what the white space is within an account, the next step is to develop a team-based strategy around how we are gonna engage with the stakeholders we've identified and realize the revenue we've uncovered. Prolific objectives is where organizations can implement a templatized and proven sales strategy focused on driving accountability through sales, Salesforce tasks and chatter. The strategy section also includes components to ensure teams are aligned around key dates and key opportunities relative to the account plan. Once it comes time to engage with stakeholders using relevant and marketing approved content, Prolific Sales Library is able to serve up that content on any object in Salesforce, ensuring reps are never more than a click away from engaging with the stakeholder with an email. So why do half of CRM projects fail? As we've shown you, key account management and content management play a key role in preventing your CRM project from failing by improving the sales process and bringing reps back into Salesforce. Awesome, awesome. You have, you, you did it, 10, 10 seconds to spare. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jake, for that great demo. I think uh, you make my heart sing. I mean, when when agents and users of Salesforce are just one click away, not five, not two, it just really makes their job a lot easier from, from end to end. I love the fact that your application ties together a lot of questions that everyone's looking to see in a visual type of way on the opportunity so it's right there. Uh, that's the, probably the one of the best ways that I've seen cross-sell mapping actually done and being able to understand the white space with the graphics and then being able to drag and drop the org chart, that was pretty neat. And you know, being able to inline edit the contact data for efficiency and making sure that uh, you keep the contact updated is, is, is a really neat feature as well. So thank you for showing all of that. Bonus for you is the content, um, being able to dynamically determine what kind of content might be needed and sending it out to the customer. So thanks very much for all those things, Jake. Really appreciate it. Yep. Amanda, what questions do we have out there for Prolific? Yes, great demo, Jack. The question is, how, because you showed so many different features and functionality, how are some of your customers really experiencing this the best, like in the most game-changing way? What are some of the best features they, they enjoy? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think, you know, one of the core differentiators for us as a company is that we are 100% native. We only work with the Salesforce customer. So we eliminate the, the need to have an SOW uh, um, implementation project that comes along with this. Our apps download in minutes and truly our applications are built by sales reps for sales reps. We thought more about what not to put in our apps than what to put in them. And what you'll see is that we bring the most valuable selling motions, understanding your customers and engaging with relevant content all from within Salesforce, which really it validates the investment that companies have made in customer data in Salesforce as a whole and end user training. So it's really, really easy for teams to get up and running because they already know how to use Salesforce. And it just looks like the Salesforce's latest release came out with account planning and content management in, in Salesforce. Awesome, thank you so much, Jake. Really appreciate your time today. Jeff, who do we have up next? Well, before we get to who's, who's next, I just wanna say, hey, Amanda, look who's twinning now. Just wanted to, just wanted to say exactly, see? Wow, Jeff. Our team happy now. 
Oprah are twinning. I got to go get mine. I need my appy yeah. hat. I got my appy bobblehead, though. Oh, boy. Don't rub it in now. I, I don't have that. And one but, of these partners will have an, a trophy. So that's, that's, I mean, that's really cool. That is absolutely true. Well, without any further ado, I have the pleasure of introducing Seismic. Seismic is an industry-leading sales enablement and marketing orchestration solution that aligns go-to-market teams while empowering them to deliver engaging buyer experiences that drive growth. And we all need growth. You can boost seller productivity by equipping them with proven content right within Salesforce. And sellers are able to accelerate the sales cycle while winning more often, which is what everybody wants. You can unleash the power of content right within Salesforce. And to show us how Seismic works, I got Connor Green. Hey, Connor. Hey, what's going on? Uh, hey, I'm doing a demo jam here and you're next no up. So, you know what? I'm gonna give you three minutes starting right now. Let's see it. Awesome. Well, let's see how Seismic helps sellers be more productive by enhancing their experience in Salesforce. I'm going to start today from a Maersk opportunity at Atlas Corporation. As you, as you can see, like Netflix recommends movies for me to watch. Seismic is actually pushing content uh, that is relevant to me within this Salesforce object, be it a lead account or in this case, an opportunity. I can see why this content is being suggested to me. Take this Atlas pitch deck, for example. It's coming highly ranked. Look into the details to see it checks all the boxes of content relevance. I can also see usage and engagement stats to see how popular it is with my team and how much attention it's gained when being sent to prospect. If I click into this deck, I'm gonna see a perfect example of Seismic's live doc technology. As you can tell, this is not just a static presentation, but rather a live form that's pulling in data from the Salesforce object to help me as a seller create custom personalized presentations every time. Some fields are automatically populated. I select who I'm speaking with. I can edit my business challenges on the fly, remove a section that might not be relevant to my conversation, add in a case study that I think is relevant for my marketing approved library, and I build out this deck. So marketing wins big here because they can rest assured knowing that sales is using the latest and greatest content available to them. And sellers win big because a process that used to take me you know, hours, if not days or weeks, uh, to assemble a complex presentation just took me a matter of clicks. And I'm no longer spending time finding content, but instead that content is finding me all within my Salesforce workflow, giving me more time to perfect my messaging or collaborate with teammates and less time doing administrative tasks like building decks or uh, you know searching through content repositories. So this deck has been assembled. I can quickly preview it, it looks good. And I can share it via a live send link. It's going to send a hyperlink to my prospect and give them a view similar to this. Now I can track all of my live send links from my engagement center. This is where I'll see my most recent Maersk microsite that I created and see my presentation as well as an activity feed on who's been engaging with this content, how long they spent looking at each page and feeding that data back to marketing to understand what's working in the field. Say I need more resources for my prospect. I can add additional content without sending unnecessary emails to this link. Quickly save my changes. I've added this Atlas for Maersk piece. And I can preview this piece of content um, all from within Seismic. Now I've created this interactive micro app, which differentiates from just a static presentation, it allows my buyer to actually engage with this piece of content differently, create a unique buyer experience efficiently, all from within Salesforce. Look at you getting done with three seconds left, Connor. You know, I, okay, I'm gonna say it, I'm impressed. Here's why, because the amount of content that's out there that people are trying to sift through and oftentimes finding probably the wrong content and you're not getting the actual performance metrics that you need around where should be marketing be putting more effort and time and investment for the right kind of content here you're putting it together with the best of the best you're creating those slides as it is and then when you started dealing with the microsite and now getting the actual engagement of hey where are they going and what are they clicking on what are they you can communicate much more effectively with people and it's not like okay well what is this attachment that somebody sent me 
I've got something that's much more engaging, personalized, and you never left Salesforce as far as I could see. So pretty cool. I'm I'm amazed by that because especially when you when you started out saying, well, who's going to be attending this meeting? And you could personalize it based on what's going to be important for each of those constituents. I think that's pretty cool. Me too. I want to find out from Amanda, <laughs> who didn't go and put on her Appy sweatshirt. I want to find out what question you got for Connor. Yes, I did not. Um, you know, you said you're I going to. I'm, I'm holding you to it, but okay, go I ahead. Got, I got to find it. I mean, we've had so many, so much cool garb over the years. Um, all right, so the also I was sorry, I was like sucked into that demo, so I had a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So great job. Yes, on the demo. The question is, how does a company get started using interactive content? Yeah. So that last piece I showed you was that interactive portion. And, um, you know, I focus a lot on seller productivity, but we also take a, a focus on marketing productivity. So that piece you saw there with the moving videos and clickable links, uh, it's very simply made on top of your current existing content. Uh, can all be made within Seismic. Uh, so no need to overhaul your content library. Uh, you simply just layer different assets on top and it can be done really within an hour. Poof, within an hour. Now that's <laughs> something to throw down. I, I think that's a challenge we all got to go out and try out. Nice job, Connor. Thank you so much for being here today. Jo Thank you. Oh, now Joshua went and got the hat. Okay. <laughs> the best the best thing about being home is all my swag is shipped to my mom's house. So I have like costume changes galore here. So <laughs> anything that everyone sent me from Salesforce for the past year, I have access to. So there's plenty more to come as well. So let's see Take what else I can do. All right. So next up I have the pleasure of introducing Smartsheet. Depended on by over 90% of Fortune 100 companies, Smartsheet transforms work into dynamic work, unifying collaboration, workflows, and content management into a flexible, secure, scalable platform that gives everyone the ability to continuously make an impact so the enterprise can complete in a transformed world. With Smartsheet for Salesforce Connector, teams can automatically sync, organize, update, and share Salesforce information, keeping everyone in the know and on track uh, with all of the work progress. That's definitely a lot, but never fear. Today we've got Mike and Diana, who's gonna share how to do all of that in three minutes or less. Are you ready? Yeah. All Today. right, your, your three minutes starts now. Good luck. Thanks, Joshua. Hey, everyone. Today we're here to talk about a struggle that many of our customers have trouble with, client implementations. Our customers were spending hours digging through emails, chats, and meeting notes to keep their teams and clients on the same page. Now, our customers use Smartsheet and Salesforce together. Salesforce as a system of record, whereas Smartsheet is a platform for work execution. Together, these platforms create a scalable, collaborative, and dynamic solution that helps everyone stay informed. So in Salesforce, uh, we have this opportunity that's ready to be closed. So when the opportunity is marked as one, information about client name, amount, close date, all needs to be passed to our project team using our Salesforce connector. So we simply set up the connector uh, to connect to this opportunity and to our services intake sheet. Um, we can customize the fields that get brought over. Um, we can map those over and we can also choose which way the data gets pushed. In this case, we're going to actually push the data from Salesforce into Smartsheet because that's the opportunity that got closed. So we'll go ahead and push that over into our intake sheet. Exactly. The information populates as a new row within the intake sheet, and we can assign resources like the product owner or executive sponsor. And when your team is ready to kick off a new project, simply check provision initiated to kickstart a process that automatically creates a new set of assets for your client implementation. Once created, these assets roll up to a client facing dashboard within Smartsheet. These dashboards give you a way to share a curated set of data or a collection of resources in a visual way with both internal and external stakeholders. The client always has visibility into the status, the raid log, and the project timeline by viewing this dashboard. The when, Sorry, good. Oh, when the project manager needs to update the statuses of all the projects, they can use an active project roll-up sheet to update the statuses of all of their projects at the same time. 
These updates to the health or project status are reflected in each of the customer facing dashboards. Now the account team needs to stay informed about how the project is going as well. So to move this data back into Salesforce projects, we create an additional connector workflow. And in this case, we're gonna push the information from Smartsheet back to Salesforce. Now that information is going to show up within the Demo Jam project that we just created here. So if I do a quick refresh, you'll see that my status here moved from yellow into a green status. So now we have all the information where we need it to be and in the right time that it needs to be there. Um, so this pretty much concludes our, our demo here. Awesome, thank you so much. Just like a Demo Jam on time, on track with $25,000 budget. I love that. Thank you so much, Mike and, and Diana, for that great demo. Smartsheet has been in the ecosystem for a very long time. I happen to be a user of it. And one of the things that I like about it is that I can um, do Gantt charts. And this is just taking the Smartsheet to the whole nother level because now the data that I put in my Smartsheet can sync back into Salesforce or vice versa in real time without me having to track the data in two different places. So that's one of the things I love about these demo jams is I learn something new for the existing apps and new apps that are out there. So I am always learning on these demo jams. Thank you so much. Amanda, what questions do we have out there for Smartsheet? Look, I found my hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing, one uh, important aspect of the demo jam, right? Okay, great demo. I promise I found the hat super fast so that I was able to watch the demo. Um, so the question is, what are some of the other use cases people are leveraging Smartsheet for to stay productive? Good question. Um, so our, our largest ones, our key uh, use cases here is for like marketing campaign management, event management, uh, shared services, uh, project and portfolio management as we showed today is these are services projects, um, enabling your IT leaders. And we have over 2,500 documented use cases. Um, so of course, contact us for information at smartsheet.com. Awesome, thank you so much. I love the fact that you tie that into a dashboard that can be shared with external uh, folks as well. It was also your bonus, so thanks a lot for putting that Definitely. together. All right, Jeff, you got any swag to share? Oh. Not to be outdone. I'm ready for the next demo to go on here because I got my friend. She's gonna stay right here and watch the whole thing. Next up, I've got Verb Live. They combine their interactive technology with state-of-the-art live streaming capabilities VerbLive provides a unique and effective way to connect, engage, and sell. It's for anybody looking for an effective collaboration way to present or train from a distance or even sell in real time without limitations. And to show us exactly how it works, I want to hear McKinley Oswald come up here and tell us how we can do live streaming to sell, engage, and connect with people. Are you ready? I'm ready. I just wish I had that yellow hoodie, man. But other than that, I think I'm good to go. I, we there's a possibility of hooking you up at some point. We'll see. Awesome. All, All right. right, your three minutes begins now. Perfect. Verb Live is the ultimate tool for live webinars, presentations, and ultimately live selling. Live uses a unique technology that allows attendees to click on these interactive buttons right in the meeting. And it's super easy for Salesforce users to use Live and increase their productivity. First, they sign into Verb Live using the Salesforce App Exchange, add Live to Global Actions, and then invite leads and contacts, and then host a live meeting like I'm doing right now. What you see here is the presenter view when a Salesforce user is doing a live meeting. The basic features of any live meeting platform are all here. Over here, I can see who's in the meeting. They can also ask live Q&A, and I see real-time analytics from partic participants as they click on these buttons. This is our secret sauce these live interactive buttons. So today I wanna to show you how a Salesforce user that would be a, a demo uh, being given by a medical device sales rep. In this example, they would invite doctors or office assistants to participate in the live meeting. So first, I'm gonna share my screen here. And by sharing my screen, I could walk them through how this medical device would work in their office. Now, when I return back to live, I have these interactive links that my participants can click on to access content and even to make a purchase. This link right here, for example, is a link to a video that gives them an overview of how the device would work. Here, I have a link to my calendar. 
that would sync up that they could set an appointment with me to ask questions or to follow up about this presentation. And then lastly, right here, I have a link that would give them access to the web page for the 3D view of their device to see how it would work in their office. I could also add a quote or allow them to be able to purchase the device. Now, over here in the live Q&A, I can see questions from my participants. For example, this question here from Dr. McDreamy. If I don't answer that one, my wife's gonna get pretty upset. I can also see what links and interactions my contacts have clicked on. And these analytics will also sync back to the Salesforce record so that I have record of what they clicked on during this live meeting. This enables me to better follow up with them based on what took place during the meeting. And if I have new contacts that join into the meeting that aren't in Salesforce, these contacts will be synced back in as leads along with their uh, activity from this meeting. Now, after I end the meeting, I'm given a report summarizing every interaction that happened and who attended. As you can see, Verb Live is the ultimate platform for live meetings. And in this new normal, live can make more of an impact than ever before. And the key differentiator is my live participants can take action right here in the meeting by clicking on live's interactive buttons. The Verb Live interactive functionality makes for a compelling presentation, giving an experience unlike any other live meeting. Everybody has been doing it right up to the moment. You had a couple of seconds left there, but wow, I had no idea that somebody has been putting together a product like this. And to be able to now, this is the way we do engage from afar and being able to have all of that synced back into Salesforce. So no longer are you taking CSVs or Excel spreadsheets and putting them back into Salesforce. You're getting the live interaction of what's going on. You're passing uh, great interactive buttons out to them. Even being able to do, I was wondering about the rotating thing out there. I was thinking, well, where is that going? That's crazy. And if you think about it now, if you could partner with a marketing team to make the sales materials and everything that you can pass out during a during a presentation and now get all of those interactions back into Salesforce to show indicators of where they had interest, what they clicked on. I mean, all of that activity logging is tremendous for the whole sales process, or I can imagine for training just the same. Absolutely. Woo. Wow. Okay. Amanda, what have we got for an audience question for Verb Live? Yeah, I enjoyed that demo. I thought it was great to be able to see and hear at the same time, you know, showing versus telling. So I thought it was really unique. Um, now, I talked about, what was it, Dr. McDreamy? I don't know. I got kind of sucked <laughs> into him. Um, but the question is, how would a medical sales rep use Verb Live in their Salesforce instance? No, and that's a great question. Right now, you know, 75% of our users who use Salesforce that are medical device reps, they can't get into doctor's offices. So they're using Verb Live within Salesforce to be able to present. I can't go in and have a meeting. I can't do these things. So this type of opportunity allows them to come in, host a meeting, have that interaction with them, talk back and forth, answer questions. And then this interactivity, you know, it makes it for, you know, a super compelling uh, interactive nature with the video instead of just you know going through a zoom or something like that it allows me to come in and present in this way and then all the interactions sinking back in then enable the follow-up and just help me to be more productive in my efforts for selling and presenting and also training on these new devices fantastic thank you for that today Joshua over to you for our final contestant today Wait a minute, I got Hang something on. else. I got this piece of swag. This is the coveted trophy that one of these amazing partners will win. Look, it says Demo Jam and it's got Appy on it. So that was my latest show and tell. I'll, That's I'll good go stuff, but, but now as soon as we go and we switch, Joshua goes and does a wardrobe change. This is getting out of hand. All right, let's see what, what, what does Joshua have up now? Wait a minute, just uh, just drawing <laughs> some water from my Dreamforce water bottle and my nice brand new Representation Matters shirt. So fresh out of the box, y'all, fresh out of the box. Definitely. All right, so next up we have mock-up components. Have you ever had an idea on how, how everything should look so much better? What if Salesforce layout could be just this way or what if it could look like this and have you gotten stuck? What if you could have a hot list 
that shows all of your warm leads where you knew whom to call and when. What would it look like? Hmm. Or what would it do when I click on this button? How would others use it? Would they like it? Sometimes it can be intimidating to hire out for design of how it might work only to wonder how it could behave in your Salesforce orgs or have developers and admins go back and forth with design teams and update the visualizations. Lots of time wasted going back and forth. So, so for those times where we don't want to, um, to waste the time, we can use creative utilities that are built on Salesforce that allow you to mock up those experiences. Not the whole entire experience from ground up, but just one little section. Today, we've got Paul who's gonna show us how to do just that in three minutes or less. Paul, you're out there? I am. Awesome, over to you, sir. In three minutes or less, show us those sexy mock-ups. All right. Well, I'm so excited to talk about mock-up components. The mock-up component suite is a way to be able to vision what the Salesforce experience could be for layouts or for components directly within your org. And because it uses the app builder as a source of truth, that means that we can be able to mock up what it is that we want to see right next to what it is that we already have access to, unlike what you'd normally have from within wires or for within comps. That means that you can leverage the standard functionality you already have access to within the app builder, such as within permissions or fields, filters or page layouts to show them what you want to see and to whom you want to see it when you want to see it. And because it's also going to be leveraging the standard Salesforce functionality for it, you can be able to show it directly from within your org while you're doing A-B testing. This can be so powerful as you can have administrators, developers, and designers all showing their ideas all within the org within a shared space. So that means that you can use standard Salesforce navigation to be able to show it. Now, the way that it ultimately works is that you ultimately end up having three ways of doing it. You can be able to capture placeholders and uh, you can be able to capture ideas from within standard rich text and you can be able to do that within the app builder. But as you take those placeholders, you can ultimately take those and ultimately show in pictures so you can get feedback and allow the team members to be able to update them directly from within the org. But once you end up having those pictures, you can one by one make them real. And that becomes just so powerful as you can be able to better manage expectations about what it is that you'd like to see. It's just so helpful for groups that are going to be brainstorming or iterating on layouts or iterating on components. And the way that it's ultimately available is through three types of components. The first are text components where you can have placeholders and rich text notes to capture ideas, but even have a data grid where you can double click on it to directly access the CSV underneath the sheets. So you, don't, uh, you can be able to leverage mocking services such as Mockaroo, for example, to be able to keep that conversation going. The next, we also have wrapper components around for Lightning Design System Blueprints so that you can be able to have discussions about what exactly is a Salesforce alert or what is a header. And you can be able to then make those things configurable so you can show exactly what it looks like the way that you'd like to make that look. Now, the last part on here is just this most that's most important. And it's really pictures. It really cannot be under, uh, understated. Can you imagine as you're actually talking with a customer, let's say over on your mobile phone, I want to be able to take a whiteboard and I want to be able to show that. Let me actually do that on my phone, be able to take a picture, be able to upload that from my photo library and be able to see it directly from within the org. That's just so powerful. So for customers that are thinking about brainstorming or exploring layouts or designing or iterating on components, this is what we're hoping could be helpful for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Paul. I mean, you know, one of the things when I'm out in the field talking with customers all the time is I, I, UI is subjective. And because it's so subjective and someone has to kind of touch it and feel it, one of the things I love to preach is um, measure twice and cut once. Um, you know, hours can be wasted if you don't have all the requirements or a u user interface, especially custom thought through within your development team, it really it really um, deserves using a tool like yours to be able to make sure that you measure twice and cut once and optimize your development time. Um, that development time that you save can be used on adding new features, but the minute that you write code, it's a liability in terms of readjusting it if you don't have an idea thought out. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Awesome. Well, Amanda, what question do we have out there for Paul? Great demo, Paul. The question is, how can we further simplify this to really get our ideas into Salesforce faster? 
Well, so the great thing is, is that we're able to actually do that directly from within the org. So when you're having the whiteboarding sessions where you're trying to brainstorm in terms of what you want to have, those can become working brainstorming sessions. So if I know that I want to be able to have, for example, a placeholder, I want to be able to have this up here and we want to try and have it as a hot, uh, hot list. I can be able to do those and have those direct conversations while we're talking with the customers so that become working brainstorming sessions. And that's what can be so powerful. One of the times I've seen this the most effectively used is where we actually had developers and artists both uh, arguing with each other by pushing up different kind of discussions. But they both made the system so much better because they were able to slowly start getting closer and closer together. And because we can leverage the Lightning Design System blueprints, they were able to show things that were ultimately going to be effective so much faster. Sounds like a dream. Thanks for sharing, Paul. All right. So what swag did I get? Jeff, can you beat me? I got my Dreamforce backpack. Hey. I probably won't be using this year. And oh, do you remember I got a lanyard. Do you remember these? I MVP do. MVP shoes. I don't know if people can see it. Oh Congress. my goodness! Still got them. They we do. do each other continually. You know what, Joshua? I am excited because this is the time of the demo jam where everybody gets to go out and vote for the winner. And frankly, they're all winners. However, we have to have somebody pick. And I was I was amazed by what I saw today because. These are some really useful tools that help in so many different ways, whether it be communicating, getting deals signed, finding the right content, all of these different pieces are really powerful. So how does everybody vote? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Amanda's going to tell you. Yes. Um, now we have the screen up um where you can vote so go ahead and type this url into your browser or on your phone and go ahead and vote voting is open through november 19 at one o'clock eastern so if you're watching this after that date the voting is closed but you get to see who the winner is on twitter which is pretty exciting and yes actually so november 20th amanda today is the 19th oh my gosh you're right the 20th thank you today is the 19th 24 hours november 20. um and um we will also be announcing the winner via twitter so watch um and follow app exchange november 20. november 20. thank you that's right. So it has been an exciting demo jam. I so much appreciate everybody who's been here. Amanda, what else is happening in the demo jam world these days? You know, we're very excited for uh, Dream TX coming up on December 14 through 17. So uh, stay tuned and watch for some amazing app exchange sessions and some fun giveaways and even a demo jam. So that is all coming. And all of these apps today are available on the app exchange. So check out appexchange.com. It is the leading enterprise cloud marketplace with thousands of ready to install solutions like you've seen today, over 8 million installs. So thank you to our customers for that. And over 80,000 peer reviews. So you can see um, what other customers are using and how they're using it. Definitely go check it out. Plus we have consultants for some um, certified expertise and you can work with as well. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you to our contestants. I look forward to seeing who wins. We'll see you next month with the next Demo Jam. Bye. Bye-bye.